Oh man, yeah, no, there was no clickbait in this title. Basil is not a fan of me. Basil is literally terrified of me, and it's the worst. Mr. Basil. As you can see, it's either this, or him running around in there, or completely going into the cork tube. Today we really need to do something about this, because the longer we wait, the larger of an animal he's going to become, the more challenging it's going to be to work with him. I understand fully that varanids can take time to warm up to you and everything, but there's a clear difference between how quickly this happened with Sabzi and Basil, and I've come to realize I made a huge mistake. So back when I got Basil, somehow I thought it'd be a good idea to put his enclosure in my bedroom. And by doing that, I didn't realize that that's actually the space that I spend the least amount of time in. My logic was that, okay, so you know, I'll wake up every morning and he'll be there and he'll get used to me like coming out of my bed and he'll see me wake up, get up, and hopefully over time, he kind of just get used to me being around. But I don't spend much time in my room when he's awake. I get up, come to the reptile room, and I'm working all day. The only time he's gonna see me is when I'm cleaning out his water dish, his enclosure, and feeding him. We've basically developed this relationship where I'm this scary giant who now has a huge beard. And by the way, I was thinking about shaving that thing. Not after all those comments. We'll keep it around for a while. Anyhow. So, I, I just don't know what to do. And then it dawned on me, I said to myself, hmm, well, what if we move Sabzi into his enclosure and move Basil into Sabzi's enclosure? Because that way, he's forced to be around me in a non-intrusive way. It's just that I'm gonna be in the room and he'll have to get used to me being there. And then we can make the same baby steps with tongue feeding, getting him to walk out onto my hand. I just feel like this course of action is going to work so much better than what is happening right now. And Sabzi, Sabzi. Like, you're not gonna untrain, untame that girl. She literally is a shoulder dragon. So I'm not too worried about her. We'll go into the room frequently, handle her, get her to jump. But yeah, no worries there on her end. The enclosure's set up pretty well the same way, minus the growth on the plants, so she shouldn't be too freaked out. I guess like basil scent is there. They're both very healthy captive bred animals, so I'm not worried about needing to clean out the enclosure or anything like that. Yeah, it should work. At this point, I really, really wanna help get basil to warm up to me. I can't even feed the guy in front of him. He doesn't eat. I have to leave the room, I'll walk into the room, peer around the corner, and I can see him running around catching crickets, but as soon as he turns and sees me, he stops. And that's why you haven't seen him in any feeding videos. And that's just how it is, I guess, but it obviously sucks. So we need to do something about this, and get him on board, get him to understand how nice I am, and how much fun we can have if you would just warm up to me. So today what we're gonna do is feed Sabzi, Feed Basil, I'll just throw the camera in front of him and hope that we get some footage of him eating without knowing that he's being recorded. And then we'll transfer Basil into Sabzi's enclosure and Sabzi into Basil's enclosure and see how they do. I imagine that Basil's probably just gonna bolt right into a cork hollow and just stay there and that'll be the end of seeing him in this video. It'll be curious for me to see how Sabzi behaves when she's introduced to Basil's, because she's so comfortable in general, I don't think she'll be scared. She'll probably just be like, walking around, checking things out, and wondering why she's there, but it'll work out in the end. All right, everybody, so last night, I took the time to gut load the Jiminy's, so they're gonna be nice and nutritious for anybody eating today. I used the Arcadia insect fuel, and I also mixed a little bit of the Rapashi insect gut load in there. And there were a few pieces I threw in. And there's just a few little remnants left. So I think we're in good shape to start dusting these. And get them ready for Sabzi and Basil to enjoy their lunch. Sabzi's eagerly waiting to come out and eat as you can see. So today we're using the Arcadia Earth Pro A full spectrum. Let's get this on some Jiminy's. Gently swoosh them around, make sure they're all coated. All right, let's throw some crickets in for Basil. You'll notice right away that he has no interest in eating these immediately when they go in the enclosure. He might look at them, but he's not gonna go eat any of them while we're around. That is a very clear indication 
he's not very comfortable yet. Anyways, I got my camera here. We'll try and film a time lapse and see how long it takes him to eat his lunch after we leave the room. Hello there. Here. Did you get it? Where did it go? Did you find it? Where's the Jiminy? Tabsy. Where's the Jiminy? She's looking. She's looking for the crickets. Hi. You want to come? All right. Ready? Ready, Sabzi? Ready, Sabzi? Ready? Alright, so now that Sabzi enjoyed all those crickets, let's go ahead and check the footage in my bedroom and see if Basil ate anything. Fingers crossed. Finally! So the footage did at least show us that Basil is eating, or at least that he was willing to eat on camera. Anyhow, both animals have taken some time to eat now. I think it's time that we transfer them into each other's enclosures. Let's do that now. For today's question of the day, I wanna ask you guys, have you ever had an animal that you truly just struggle to train or tame? Maybe it's your dog. Maybe you have a parrot and it's just really being stubborn. Or maybe you have a green tree monitor like me and yeah, it's just not fun or easy. Let me know in the comment section down below because I'm curious to hear about your taming stories or struggles. And as always, I'll give your comment a heart and we can engage in a little bit of a conversation afterwards. Awesome. All right, you can call me a wimp if you want, but I'm putting gloves on because the last few times I've had to handle Basil, man, I get cut up pretty bad by his nails. It's just avoidable. So we're going to do that to get him out and uh, see how this goes. Also guys, I did notice that Basil's having a little bit of a rougher shed on some toes. So before we get him in Sabzi's enclosure, we're also going to put him in this tub with some lukewarm water so he can have a bit of a, you know, 10 to 15 minute bath in here, soak up a bit. If there's any stuck skin, it loosens up before going into the new home. All right, we'll let him do his thing for 15 minutes or so, and then we'll get Sabzi in this enclosure and move him into hers. All right. All right guys, so I think that while we have Basil here in his lukewarm bath for the shed, we're gonna go ahead and introduce Sabzi to his enclosure. Hello. 
So it's kind of awesome. As soon as we got into the room, Sabzi ran up onto me. Hey, well, that works. Okay, well, she decided to make herself at home. Now this is very interesting, look. She's clearly sensing Basil, if you ask me. So she just jumped into his enclosure and she's checking things out now. And I'm sure they're able to kind of mark their territory and whatnot, but she's, yeah, she's definitely being perceptive of that. Is she willing to eat in here? I think she's gonna figure out quickly that there's no other monitor in here and his scent will quickly be replaced with hers. But yeah. Isn't that weird, Sabzi? It's like your birdhouse. Just in another monitor's home. So this is gonna be your home for a while, okay? Well, until you guys get your big upgrades this spring or summer. Oh, look, you're just so used to the birdhouse, you just go right into it. You're like, okay, what's in here? I love it. Basil's probably never done this, at least not when I'm around. First thing Sabzi does is go and check out the birdhouse. Oh, uh, you're hilarious, girl. I love it. Okay, well, I don't know. I guess we can just let her be and do her thing in peace. We'll add some plants to your enclosure, maybe, huh? When things open up a little bit more, we'll go to a nursery, get you some new plants. How's that sound? Yeah? Okay, friends, it's time to get Basil into Sabzi's enclosure. It's interesting seeing how tree monitors move through water despite being arboreal. Uh, they really are suited to be able to go in the water too if they want to. You're okay, buddy, you're okay. You're all right. One thing I noticed that's really neat is how much thicker Basil's nails or toes are than Sabzi's. It's much larger digits than she does. I don't know if that's anything to do with sexual dimorphism, but anyways. All right, buddy, there you go. Go ahead. Hey, you're all right. You're okay, mister. See, this is the behavior that's really alarming and I don't want him rubbing his nose too much, but you're okay, mister. He's very cautious. I'm gonna back up a bit. Uh, Basil. All right, let's not disturb him more than that. I have a few closing remarks I wanna give about this. But uh, friends, the switch has been made. Basil is officially in Sabzi's enclosure and vice versa. I'm really hopeful that this is gonna lead to great things over time. And I will certainly give you updates on that. Friends, in closing, I do want to make one thing really clear. I'm in no rush to get Basil to warm up to being handled or interacting with me. I want everything to be at his pace, and that's always been my philosophy in the way that I create bonds or tame my reptiles. It's not something I force on them, it's something that I want to have happen at their pace. But that doesn't mean that there aren't things I can do to facilitate that process. And I'm really confident that the decision or step we took today is going to really make things work more smoothly by creating a situation where Basil kind of has to get used to me. Now, that's not me going in and touching him, that's him realizing that I'm gonna be in the room, I'm a presence, I'm not harmful to him in any way, and I really think that over time, we're gonna see that have a great benefit to how this animal learns to interact and be comfortable around me. All right, everybody, so there you have it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed today's video. I can't wait to give you guys updates on how this is gonna go. I'm really hopeful that Basil will come around and we'll be seeing a lot more of him on the channel. For now, I've been really respecting his timid nature and, you know, not trying to coax him out into the open or do anything too crazy for the sake of getting him on the channel. That's not the priority to me. It's just getting down to his level and making sure he's a comfortable, healthy animal. 
I think that this is going to be really helpful in building a relationship with this guy and uh, yeah hopefully he's gonna come around he's a beautiful lizard and I really really hope that I can achieve the same connection with him as I have with Sabzi so wish us luck and I'll leave it at that. As always, if you'd like to support this channel further, I have my merch store, which is linked down below, where you can purchase different types of clothing, posters, stickers, you name it. And I also have my Patreon link down below, where you can become a member for as little as $2 a month. That also helps support the channel and allows me to save money towards doing really cool projects and other things. So those of you that are supporting, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And yeah, I really appreciate everyone's viewership. Have a wonderful weekend, and I look forward to seeing you all on Tuesday. Take care. If you want to see more videos about green tree monitors, check out the playlist up above. Bye, guys. <laughs>